Hello, this short video is designed to introduce you to the marine group called mollusks. Mollusks are more commonly known as shells. Every beach is different and home to different numbers and types of shells. But here where I'm standing now is a very popular beach for shell photographers and that's because of the low reefs and the sea grasses and seaweeds where shells can get their food. This is Ricketts Point on Port Phillip Bay in Australia and here you can find up to 40 different types of shells. And remember, this is a marine sanctuary which means it's a no take zone. You can touch and look at everything here but you must not take anything home with you and put everything back where you found it. As you can see there are many shells here and as I walk along this beach I can usually find four out of the five major groups of mollusks. We classify shells or mollusks into five major groups. These are the univalves, bivalves, headfoots, chitons and tusk shells. Older students will know that we have other names for these groups. Let's now learn about each shell. This shell that I'm holding here is a turban shell. A turban shell is a univalve. Univalve means one piece. It's made of one piece of shell and has one opening at its base. The animal that lives inside this shell was once eaten by aboriginals. Univalves have an operculum which is like a door that protects the animal inside from predators and stops it from drying out when it's caught in the sun on the reefs. An operculum looks like this. a moon snail and another a limpet. Univalves can be seen on reefs moving along looking for food but a limpet moves so slowly that you might not think it moves at all. Univalves can be herbivores or carnivores. Herbivores are plant eaters and carnivores are meat eaters. Later on I will show you how you can tell the difference between whether a shell is a herbivore or a carnivore. Watch this busy shell look for food. This is an ostracoclear constrictor. The constrictor part of its name comes from the boa constrictor like lines around the shell. This shell that I'm holding here is a bivalve. Bivalve means two parts, like bicycle, which means two wheels. This shell here is a mussel, and mussels are a very popular shellfish to eat. You can see here that it has been previously hinged, like the strawberry cockle shell, which when you find on the beach is usually only in one part. Bivalves usually attach themselves to something solid and wait for food to come to them. These are what we call filter feeders, which pick up small particles in the water to feed on. Not all bivalves are attached. Some are free swimming, like a scallop, which moves its shells apart like this and pushes water out to swim. The third group of shells out of our group of five are the chitons, and chitons are very ancient shells made up of eight parts. When chitons die, the bottom fringe breaks down and the eight parts fall apart. Chitons are one of the first animals to develop eyes and can tell the difference between light and dark. Chitons are very popular in our bay here and come in a range of colours and designs. You may be surprised to find out that some shells have evolved so much that they've turned into creatures like a squid, octopus or cuttlefish. Their single foot and part of their insides have evolved into things like tentacles. Their shell has become so unimportant to them that it has dwindled away inside them. This is a cuttlefish's inside shell. You may have seen one of these before on a beach. 
These shells we call headfoots or are also known as cephalopods. Cephalopods are very smart creatures and are very curious when they find us in the water with them. And lastly, the final group of shells are called the tusk shells. I don't have one to show you because they're very rarely found on beaches, but they look just like what you would think, like an elephant tusk but a lot smaller. Tusk shells can be found close to the equator in hotter parts of the world where Pacific Islanders once used them to make necklaces and use them as money. I would now like to show you how you can tell the difference between a herbivore shell and a carnivore shell. Remember, herbivores are plant eaters like cows and carnivores are meat eaters like ti tigers. This turban shell is a herbivore. It has a round opening and an operculum cover. These shells here are carnivore shells. They have a teardrop opening. They also have a section for their radula, which is like a drill that they use to drill other shells to feed on their meat. Here is another carnivore shell, a moon snail. This dogwinkle is a very common predator in our bay. On these carnivore shells you can see this channel where their radula, which is a body part that they use to drill through other shells like this to feed on the meat inside. shells can only be found on reefs and on top of and underneath rocks but shells dig themselves down deep in the sand like this moon snail shell which I've just pulled out of the sand in the water. I'd also like to show you this cone shell Cone shells are very dangerous and very venomous and if you ever see one of these cone shells you must not touch them. Well there we have it kids, the five major groups of the mollusks, the shell family. Before we go some other interesting facts, shells have three layers. An hard outside layer protects them from predators. They have a middle layer and then their inside layer is soft and protects the animal's body. can become homes of other creatures too, such as hermit crabs. So next time you're at the beach, have a look around and see what shells you can find and have a think about how those shells might live. Thank you and I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and had as much fun watching it as I have had making this movie. So next time you're at the beach, have a look around, see how many shells you can find and think about how those shells might live.